We'll now start adding some pages for our documentation. We'll keep this area, which is our index, the same. And then what I want to do is create a documentation page for link one and also for link two. All right, let's jump into the code. Before we work on our dynamic view page, let's first create some markdown files. I'm going to open up my directory structure. And then what you'll notice, and let me just collapse some of these. What you'll notice is that there is no content folder. With Nux content, it expects to retrieve the content from a content folder. So let's add that to our root directory. I'm going to right click on my docs and then add new directory and then we'll call it content. And what I can do also is add some subdirectories. Let's say I have different groups of content that I want to organize. Maybe one is just for my documentation, one is for my how to's, and one is for something completely different. Let's get that structure going here on the onset. So I'm going to right click on that content and then create a new directory and call this documentation. And now let's add a new file to documentation and let's call it doc example. And then we'll end that with a .md for markdown. This is going to be markdown files that we're creating which is pretty cool for several reasons. One is because, well, it's basically just a flat file CMS that we're creating with Nux. And also, if we create markdown files here, the cool thing about the Nux content module is that it will parse the markdown within those files and then add the appropriate HTML tags to them. And there's something else that's really cool. It's basically their secret sauce, and I'm not gonna tell you now. I'll tell you about that a little bit later. Let's go ahead and start creating our markdown file. Let's first start with creating some page metadata. So just do the three dashes and then in between that add your metadata. We'll add a title and I'll call this doc example and maybe just doc example one and then description. And let's call that documentation example example one. We can describe some other metadata as well. Let's say we have a page image that we want to use as well as maybe even a video. And we'll just leave these blank for now. Let's add some just generic markdown. Let's do a header two. So you do the pound sign, pound sign, header two. And then for a header three, that's three pound signs, header three. And maybe we'll also add a link. Let's link over to Google. So you do the name within the square brackets and then in parentheses, uh, we'll, put the, we'll put the URL. HTTPS, google.com. Maybe we'll also add a picture. So with that, you do the exclamation mark and then square brackets. And then for the alternative text, hmm, let's call this, this is an image. And we'll point to, actually, let's open up the directory structure here. What you'll want to do for this is under the static section, you'll add a new folder called images, I already did, and then also drop in an image. So we'll just use the Cleaver logo for this. I've already dropped that in there. But then you do the path relative to the static folder. So in this case, it'll be forward slash images, and then Cleaver underscore logo.png. And that will be our image. Okay, let me collapse that back down. And how about we do a couple lists as well. Let's do an ordered list. And list. And we could also do an unordered list. And we'll just do the dashes for that. Okay, cool. I like when IDs have the little preview for markdown to the right. Okay, now that we have our markdown file, let's create a dynamic route that will pull in these different content files into the view component. And for that, what Nuxt has available is, let's go to the directory structure here and then look at pages. What we'll want to do is add another page under this folder. So we see the index.view right now. That's that main content that you see that currently has the Nux logo primarily. 
And then what we'll do to create more of a dynamic page is use the underscore character. So let's go ahead and right click on that uh, pages and then new file. And then we'll do the underscore character underscore. And then we'll call this doc dot view. If you look at Nuxt documentation, a lot of times they have slug for this value, but for the context of what we're doing, I'm gonna make this doc. And then again, this is basically gonna create a dynamic route. Let me collapse that. And of course I have some starter code that I'll just post right in. I added this transition in here. It's pretty cool, I kinda of like it. So when you click from page to page to page, it has this nice kind of ease in, ease out effect, uh, which gives it a nice delightful feel. Mm -hmm. All right, so below the transition, let's call in the data from the pages. And what that's gonna look like is we're gonna have an async function. It's gonna put in async and then async data. Okay, and then within the curly brackets, we're gonna add a dollar sign content. So it's gonna call some of the Nux content functionality. And then also we're gonna call params. Looks like I forgot a C right there. Okay, so let's add a const doc equals then we're gonna await dollar sign. So we created that documentation directory, that subdirectory within the main content directory. But we'll wanna make sure that we're checking within that documentation directory, documentation. And then the page that we're gonna pull from it is gonna be params.doc. So basically the URI is gonna match the file name, do that match and then pull in that data. And then let's fetch that data. And then we'll return doc. And what we're going to return that to is up within the template section, within this div, there is a component called Nux content. And that's going to expect a document to be passed along to it. So we'll do the colon document equals and then doc. And then we'll close that up. Okay, so this should, when I go to the particular URL, pull in the documentation that we have within that doc example markdown file that we created. But let's now create a link to that from our table of contents. So that's under docs contents. Let's change this link one right here to call that first example file. So the example file is doc-example. So we'll just type that same value in here, doc-example. Cool, let's save this out and look at our browser and see if we did good. Hopefully we did. All right, so let's click on link one. Well, it looks like we messed up somewhere. So it looks like there's a variable dollar sign that we need to track down. And I'm guessing it's gonna be under underscore doc.view. And of course, right here, I forgot to actually add in content. Okay, let's save this out and then go back and take a look. All right, just refresh the page. Okay, cool. So we see that it's pulling in the data from that markdown file, albeit it's not the prettiest thing in the world. And you can see that nothing's really all that formatted. And it's also hugging the top of the page. But the good news is that we could fix this pretty easily. And I'll show you how to do that in the next video.